Hello everybody, it's the War Hipster here coming at you with another Age of Sigma painting tutorial. And today we are painting the miniature you've all been asking for, Sigvald, the Prince of Slanesh. I think that's what he's called. What's his full name? Yes, Sigvald, Prince of Slanesh. That was a hell of a guess. So what we're going to do is we're going to jump right in and we're going to start painting him. He has been primed in Wraithbone, but first color we're going to be using is a base paint and it's going to be Retributor Armor. And we're going to be doing this all over his armor details. Now, there is a bunch of gold on him that isn't just on the armor. So we've got areas like the hilt of the sword and we've got areas like the banding on the shield. We don't need to worry about doing those because we're going to do those slightly a bit later on. So what we want to do is we'll take this Retributor Armor and we're just going to start painting this all over his armor panels. Get a nice smooth consistent coat of retributor armor all over just like this now, if you need any help do just check out the box up to see where all of his armor panels are so for example on his sword arm he does have some bare flesh just in there that you can just see on the camera um so you want to leave that obviously you don't want that to be gold uh we just want the metal of the armor plates and again don't worry too much about doing all of the details that are going to be gold you can obviously if you want to at this point, but we will be re revisiting those a bit later on. And so with that done, you should now have some bright, shiny Retributor Armor Gold Armor, which looks great. But what we're going to do now is we're going to add some shading to it because we want to make this look awesome. So the color that we're going to make is a roughly four parts contrast medium to one part wildwood mix. What we want to do is we want to apply this all over the top of our gold armor. Now we just want to be careful here so as not to overload it too much. But what this is going to do is it's going to add lots of lovely shading in the dark recesses of that armor. So that when we come to then add even more shine to him, he's going to look really, really cool with that really kind of striking dark brown shading. As you can see, a little bit of this mix goes quite a long way already. You can see it there working on his breastplate. So don't use loads at a time. If you get too much on your brush, just make sure to just move quite quickly and try and kind of sponge it off with the brush itself. And so with that wild wood and contrast medium mix applied, you should have some gold armor that looks somewhat like this. Now, don't worry that it's a little darker than you might have expected because we're about to brighten it right back up. So the color that we're going to make is a roughly one part retributor armor to one part storm host silver. And what we're going to do is we're going to take that mix on our brush. And we're just going to start relayering our armor panels. And what we want to do is we want to avoid the recesses and anywhere where that shade has really settled. So we just want to pick out all of the kind of flat open spaces and any of the raised sharp edges as well. So for example, here on those, well, I guess ab plates, I'm doing this like this, just making sure we're getting it nice well covered like that so you can see we've already brightened that right back up and then what we also do is take that same mix and on this edging that's going between them we just pick that out as well so you just want to go all over the gold like this And then once these all brightened back up, we can come back. And so with that done, you should now have a very, very shiny Sigvald. But he's a little cold at the moment because we, what we want is we want him to be a, quite a warm gold. And so what we're going to do is we're going to make a roughly 10 parts contrast medium to one part yand and yellow. I'm going to take this mix. I'm going to use very small amounts of it to just try and restore some of that warmth 
into our gold. So we just want it over the top of where we've just added all of that gold. Just like this. As you can see, it's already added just that little bit of extra warmth in there, just like we wanted. And just be careful as you apply this. You don't want to apply too much at once, otherwise you'll end up kind of losing the gold shininess. And it'll just start to look yellow. If we don't want it to look yellow, we just want it to look like a warm, bright gold. Just like this. And with that done, what we're now going to do is we're going to add some highlights to all that gold armor. And the color we're going to make is a roughly two parts Stormhose Silver to one part Retributor Armor mix. And we're going to use this to highlight all of our sharp edges as well as all of the curvature on any of those armor panels. And by curvature, I mean, of course, areas like you see here on this ab plate just there. We want to run a little bit of this mix going down the inside of it like that, just around the outside of it, just to give it that kind of shine upon the edge, not just on the inside. But we also want to pick out that banding on the inside just there, like that. So we want to go around with this mixture, picking all these areas out, and then we'll come back. And with that highlight applied to all that gold armor, as you can see, he looks pretty damn blingy. Oh, he looks really, really cool. Now, as you can probably tell, as I've already started it down here, is we're going to be working on all of his cloth and stuff like that. So his cloaks and things next. And well, I forgot that I was filming a tutorial. So I filmed the, f I did the first one without filming it. So good job I caught it. So what we're going to do is we're going to be working on all of his cloaks and his skirts and things like that. The first colour we're going to be using for this is Magos Purple. And what we want to do is we want to grab that Magos Purple on our brush and we just want to very, very carefully apply it to all of the outside areas of all of our cloaks. Because the inside ones are all white. So on this one on his tabard, you've got this section just here. Down here like that. Would you want to use that Magos purple all over? And then you also want to use on the inside just here. Just going up to the edge. Like that. Just use these big broad brush strokes. Try and get a nice smooth finish on that Magos purple. Just. Like that. Okay, as you can see, we want to do this side of the cloak, or on his, on his back on the skirt on his back, and then on the cloak, as you can tell from your box art, you want to do this outside area here. Now, what you want to do is you want to get your brush all the way in here. See, just in there with a big brush load of Magos Purple. You want to make contact right up here, and then you just want to Pull that paint all the way to the end. And then just give it another quick once over just to make sure you've got that full brush stroke coloured in like that. And realistically, that's it. Just want to make sure you get all of that cloak coloured in. Just like this. And with that Magos purple all applied, what we're now going to do is we're going to take some Volupus pink. And in much the same way as we've just done, we're going to take that Volupus pink, and we're going to paint that all over the top of our cloak. Zzz. Cloak, zzz. Multiple cloaks. So again, just using these big, broad brush strokes to try and get a nice smooth coat all over. Now don't worry if it's a little bit scratchy because 
we are going to do some stuff. To this cloak to make sure it's nice and smooth should we need to and so with that Belupus pink applied what we're now going to do is we're going to make a roughly four parts contrast medium to one part shyish purple mix and again we're just going to go over the top of our cloaks. Just like that. And so with that done, we've now got a reasonably good tone that we now get to work from. So what we want to do is we want to make a roughly 10 parts contrast medium to one part screamer pink mix. I'm going to use this to smooth out our cape. So we've got the tone that we want and we've definitely got the tone we want inside there. We've got all that shade happening. We've got the highlights as well. But up here on these kind of wider open areas, we want this to be a lot stronger in colour. So just to give you a bit of an example if you look at the box art there you can see whilst we're close we're not quite there just yet so as i say we're using that screamer pink mix now what we do is we take it on our brush not very much at all and we just want to start layering up on these wide open sections so here and what you're going to see is it's a lot darker like that initially when it comes off the brush. But as it dries, it molds right back in to that tone that we've already created. So I'm going right up to where the edge of where that shade has settled. And I'm just stopping. And so with that Screamer Pink Glaze applied, as you can see, we've got this lovely smooth finish over the top of our cloak. So what we're going to do now is going to make a roughly six parts contrast medium to one part shyish purple mix. We're going to be very, very targeted and controlled about how we apply this. So we just want to take a small amount of this on our brush and then inside our recesses, we just want to reinforce that colour. Just like this. Just bring it out a little bit wider. Like that. Then what we do is we wash our brush. We take a little bit of contrast medium straight from the pot. And if that kind of transition line there is too much, we just use the contrast medium to kind of pull it out even further. Just like that. And so with that done, what we now want to do is we're going to take some thins down Emperor's Children. We want to use this to highlight the edges around our cloaks. It's got a few very prominent ones there on the tabard at the front. But on the back here, it's a slightly different story because we've got lots of little things. So around here, what we want to do is we actually want to thin it down a little bit more than we normally would. Things so take a little bit more water. And then Take that Emperor's Children on our brush and on the most extreme edges, like areas here on the corner. Just want to highlight the cloak. 
just like that. Where's on that? There's slightly more subtle edges, so we've got like just in here. Just want to be very careful. And just apply a little edge highlight. And so with that Emperor's Children highlight applied, as you can see, we've got some really lovely pinky purple cloaks now. So what we're going to do is we're going to work on the inside of them now. And the colour that we're going to use first is Corax White. But also bear in mind that what we want to do is we want to use this Corax White to recover the Slaneshi symbols and stuff on the back of the cloak. But what we want to do is we want to take this Corax White. I'm just going to start here. We just want to cover this all over the top. of the insides of all of our cloaks. Just like that. And so with that Corax white applied to all of those details, what we now want to do is we want to make a really, really thin mix of the lupus pink and contrast medium. Now I've actually put about 15 parts of contrast medium into my lupus pink because I want this to be so so thin you can see on my thumb just here how thin it's coming out because what i'm going to do now is i'm going to use this to basically apply a shade to the underside of all those cloaks now you don't want to use loads on your brush at a time when you're using the paint this thin if you use too much, it'll really run out of control. We just want to go over the entire cloak. And with that Volupus Plink Glaze applied, you should now have this really lovely kind of stained pink cloak. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna neaten it up a little bit and also kind of give it a bit more of that white. And we're gonna make a roughly one-to-one -one mix of Fulgrim Pink and Corax White. Now I've got that thinned down on my palette. And all I wanna do is on our kind of wide open spaces, for example, here along this edge, just wanna cover that over with this color, just avoiding where that shade has settled. Like so. And so with that done, the inside and the outside of our cloaks are finished. So what we're gonna do is move on. I'm gonna paint the next very prominent feature of him, which is this massive mane of hair. So the color we're gonna be using is Skeleton Horde, which is a pot that doesn't wanna stay open for some reason. Just give that a quick shake once again. Just open that up, yep. So, like I said, we're going to be using Skeleton Horde. I'm going to be using this across all of his hair. So we just want to take a nice big dollop of this on our brush and then just start painting it all the way down all of these hair strands. Make sure you work it right in there. You want to capture all of it. You want to make sure that you get inside as well. Don't forget to go up onto his head as well. And with that Skeleton Horde all applied, what we now want to do is highlight all of that hair using some thin down screening skull. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take a small amount of this on my brush and I'm just going to start picking out all of the strands of hair. Now this might take a little while because, well, there's a lot. We want to make sure that we 
just restore some of that kind of vivid blonde detail into our hair. And so with all that screaming skull applied to the hair, what we're now going to do is going to move on and we're going to paint his horns. And the colour that we're going to be using first is Corax White. And we just want to get this all over his horns. Just being careful once we get close to all that hair. Now the reason we're going with Corax White instead of just leaving it as the wraith bone that it is. It's because these are very kind of bright white horns that fade into a black. And so with that done, what we're now going to do is we are going to paint in those horns. Now, the colours that we're going to be using, yes, I've got a lot of pots of paint open here, so try not to be too nervous. The colours we're going to be using are Contrast Medium, Apothecary White, Space Wolves Grey and Black Templar. And we're going to be using them in those in that order. So what we do is we take our Contrast Medium on our brush and then I'm going to pick a horn to start with. And I'm going to start with this one here. And what we want to do is you just want to quickly get some Contrast Medium all over the top of our horn. Just like that. Then, wash the brush, grab some apothecary white, and then we take this apothecary white and we put, paint it all over our horn like this. And like that. Making sure that we've got it all over. Like so. Then I'm going to wash the brush. And then I'm going to grab some Space Wolves Grey. And then, from the top, it's a little too much, I'm just going to pull that Space Wolves Grey until about halfway down. Like that. Wash my brush again, because I need to do the other side. Just going to grab a bit of Space Wolves Grey. Bring it all the way around. And then, to finish it off, grab a bit of Black Templar and add it, that's too much, to the top of the horn. Bring it about third of the way down, like that. Same on the other side. Just like that. And then what you do, to smooth out any transitions, we go back to Apothecary White, and we just add it where the colours meet. And so with that done, you should now have this beautiful faded from black horn that comes all the way out down there. But what we are going to do is we're going to do a little bit of highlighting. The first colour that we're going to use is Ulthuan Grey. What we want to do is we want to very, very carefully use this Ulthuan Grey to pick out the ridges of the horn. all the way down and all the way to the top. So with those horns done, we can move on. And we're not going to paint the face yet because there's a couple of details around that we want to do first before we get to doing that. So for example, when we do the face, we're going to want to do his arms, his hands and his, his bum. So <laughs> what we're going to do first is we're going to use some Volupus Pink. And we're going to use this painting all of the other kind of remaining cloth details that we've got. So under here we've got his undershirt that we want to do with the Volupus pink. Just being really careful here. 
We've also got the kind of soft cushiony fabric on the back of the shield as well, which you can see just around here. And we've also got the soft grip on his sword. I realise this is a terrible camera angle, so apologies. But you see what I mean with that hand just there? You really don't want to have to risk getting the lupus pink all over that hand, having just finished off painting it. So we do this bit first to save us some trials and tribulations further down the road. And with that done, what we're now going to do is we are going to use some Gilliman flesh and we're going to use this to paint in all of the skin that isn't his face. We're going to work on the face a little bit later. So what we do is take our Gilliman flesh and just on his arms, on his legs, and yes, on his bottom. I'm going to colour it in <laughs> with this colour. And so with that done, what we now want to do is we want to use some black Templar. I'm going to use this to paint in all of our black details. So we want to get a nice good coat of this over here. as well as the outer banding on the inside of the shield. So this little area just here. And of course, all the leather straps on his legs and things like that. And so with that done, what we now wanna do is we wanna color in all of the silver details. Don't worry about highlighting any of the things that we we're doing at the moment. We are going to go back and do some highlights, but we just want to get some more base coats done before we move on. So, as I say, we're going to be doing those silver details, and the colour that we're using is Iron Hand Steel. Now, as we want to do, just want to get a nice even coat of this silver all over areas like the sword blade, the shield, the various gemstones all around him. any other details that you wish to be silver. So on that shield, we absolutely just want to be colouring in the whole of the flat. So we want this to be a nice shiny reflective mirror type finish. Don't worry about that. There's extra details around it. We are going to deal with those. But for now, we just want to work on getting the silver down. Because it's going to get very messy. <laughs> and so with that done, what we now want to do is we want to focus on getting some shading on that shield and on the sword blade. Don't worry about the other areas just for now. We're going to do those a little bit later, but we want to focus on doing this now. So when you look at the box art, there's kind of a, a lovely kind of turquoise-esque sheen to that shield and of course to the sword as well. So that's exactly what we're going to do. And we're going to make a roughly eight parts contrast medium to one part pterodon turquoise mix. And we're going to use this to shade these areas. Now it won't appear like it's doing very much to begin with. 
that's exactly what we want. So this is going to be our first layer. We are going to do a second one afterwards. It's going to be a little bit more targeted. So for example, this is how we're doing it on the sword. Just making sure that it's not too much of a buildup of color on it like that. So we just want to take a little bit off here at the end, for example, like that. Whereas on the shield, similarly again, we just want to start building this color up all over. Just like this. Make sure that we've got a lot more color towards the bottom. And just do this just by kind of stippling in some extra. Tear it on turquoise. And next up, using that same mix again, what we now want to do is we want to add even more shading to like the bottom halves of our shield. Just building it up with the exact same mix again. So we're going to add a little bit of it in here. And so with that done, we've now got this beautifully shaded sh shield with that kind of mirror effect, but it has been matted down. And having just watched a video from Duncan Rhodes' Painting Academy on how to do this, I'm going to steal his technique for brightening that back up and kind of reintroducing that shine. So what we're going to do is we're going to make a iron hand steel and contrast medium-esque glaze. And we've got about 10 parts contrast medium in that iron hand steel to make this really thin iron hand steel-esque glaze. And you see when I do it across my thumb, there's barely anything in there, but it gets all nice and shiny. So we're taking this glaze. Very, very, very thin. We don't want loads on our brush. We're just going to go over the top of our shield and our sword as well. Just like this, just to make it now appear nice and shiny. Just like that. And next up, we want to do a very, very similar thing with 10 parts contrast medium to one part Stormhost Silver to make, again, a really, really, really thin silver glaze. And on the top of the shield, or kind of in the brightest areas, what we want to do is we just want to glaze this over like this. Just to create even more an impression of shininess. Just like that. Whereas on the sword, what we want to do we want to take just some normally thin down storm host silver. We want to highlight the edges. Just like that. And so with that done, the sword and the shield 
are now finished. So what we're going to do is we're going to colour in the rest of the gold details. Now these are going to include areas like the hilt on the sword and this kind of decorative edging on the shield. Don't worry about this kind of slaneshi rune that goes around the middle. That's going to be a kind of pinky purple similar to our cloak. Now I'm not going to go through the gold again. The recipe is exactly the same as it was for the armour. The reason we didn't do it at the time of the armour is, well, as you've just seen, we got very messy with that shield and with that sword. So, we want to go back to the beginning of this video and follow the same gold recipe around here. And then once you've done that, we'll be able to move on. And with that done, all of our gold is now finished, as you can see, as we spin them around, and it looks pretty awesome. So what I've also done is I've neatened up that kind of Saneshi rune with some grey seer, and the colour that I'm going to now use is Shaiish purple. Now, we don't want very much on our brush here. We want to be very, very careful as we apply this over the top. Just like that. Now, it might take a couple of coats because we're not going to be using very much shade purple as we do this. Just for the sake of having all of that lovely control that we need to make sure we don't splodge shade purple all over our lovely shield. So just take your time here and then we'll come back. With that shyish purple applied to the rune, what we're also going to do is going to once again, still sticking with the shyish purple, we're going to use this to colour in any of the uh, kind of, yeah. With that shyish purple applied to the rune, what we're now going to do is we're going to use some shyish purple once again. We're going to use this on any gems that we've got on the shield. and on the sword hilt as well. Just like this. It's got a little one just there. And one on the back as well. So with that done, what we now wanna do is take some thinned down Emperor's Children we want to use this to highlight all those purple areas that we've just done. So for example, on the gems, we'll do it on this big one here. We just want to have a small amount of this Emperor's Children going around the bottom right, or bottom left, I should say. Bottom left corner, just like that, you can see. Gives us that kind of effect. And on the smaller ones, we want to do something very similar. Just pick one of the bottom corners to add a little bit of this Emperor's Children. Just like that. Whereas on that rune, what we now want to do is want to very carefully put too much paint on my brush there. So we want to just start picking out the edges. And so with that done, what we're now going to do is we're going to add our spot highlight. The colour that we're going to be using is Fulgrim Pink. I've got something down on my palette. And what I want to do, for example, on all the gems, we want to add a little bit of a highlight on top of that Emperor's Children that we've already applied. Just like that. And a little bit more there. Giving us quite a shiny edge on that gem. Similarly, on the smaller ones, just a small tiny amount in the same area that we've added 
that Emperor's Children. Just leaving some of it shining through. Whereas on the rune, what we want to do is we want to effectively pick out small sections of it. So we'll do a little bit there. And we'll do a little bit in the opposite corner around here as well. Like that. We'll do some on just on here. And on this tip as well. And next up, just to finish off these areas, we want to use some Corax white. So what we want to do is we want to add a little dot in the opposite corner to where we've added our pinkish slide highlights, just like that, on the gems. Whereas on the rune, what we want to do is we just want a small amount going across the middle, wherever we've added a bit of fulgrim pink. Just like that, to give it that impression of that rune really shining. And so with that done, the shield and the sword are now finished. So what we're going to do is we're going to move on. We're going to paint in these last couple of silver details just here. And the colour that we're going to use is Space Wolves Grey. And this is just to give a little bit of shading to these little areas that we originally painted with Iron Hand Steel when we did the sword and the shield. And we want to do this here on these gems. But we don't want to do it on the ones on the knee and the chest. Just need to do it here on these little details here. And so with that done, what we now do is we once again take Iron Hand Steel and we use this to highlight those silver details. Just like that. But what we also do is we use the Iron Hand Steel to pick out the smaller beads just like this and next up we're going to use a small amount of rust grey we're going to use this to highlight our black details Just like that. And so with that done, what we now want to do is take some Talisar Blue. I'm going to use this to colour in gems that we haven't done. So we've got this one up here. A little too much on my brush there. It's all right, I can just sponge it off with my brush like that. We've got these ones here. And here, got the two on his hips, and we've got the two on his knees. And with that done, what we now want to do is we want to add a little bit of shading there. So we're going to take some Achillean green, not very much at all. We're just going to add a little bit kind of like a, a, a dot in the top left corner and just put it out into the middle of each of those gems, just leaving 
some of that Talisar blue shining through in the bottom corner, like that. So similarly again up here. Just like this. And next up, we're gonna use a tiny amount of blue horror to highlight the bottom right corner. Of each of our blue gems. Just like that. And in classic war hipster fashion, I completely forgot to mention that we're also using this blue horror to add a little spot highlight to the top sides of these black details here. Just like that, just using a small amount as a little spot highlight. Just like that. And once again, just like with our purple gems, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a small dot of Corax white. I'm gonna add it in the top left corner opposite our highlight. And with that done, we have now, of course, arrived at the time that we've all been waiting for, the face. So, <laughs> the colour that we're going to be using is Gilliman Flesh. What we want to do is we just take that on our brush. We just want to get this Gilliman Flesh all over his face. Now, we're not using loads of Gilliman Flesh. We want him to be quite pale. So, we don't want to drown it in Gilliman Flesh. So, you can see I'm just like using one little brush full to get us all the way home just like that actually got a little bit too much just there just going to use the brush to mop it up we also want to make sure that we do inside his neck just like that because that is also all flesh because he's naked under there and with that then what we now want to do is take a small amount of volupus pink we want to use this to do a recess shade on his face. So you just want to find those areas. Like this. And with that done, to blend the two colours together, what we're then going to do is going to create a roughly eight parts contrast medium to one part wildwood mix. And this is going to give us a really, really, really thin brown. And then what we want to do, it's not that much on the brush, so we just want to coat this all over the top of all of that skin. And with that done, what we now want to do is make a roughly two parts flayed one flesh to one part Rakarth flesh mix. I'm going to use this to highlight all of the sharpest edges on his skin. So I'm just going to start down here on his neck, like that. And we also want to pick out areas like the bridge of the nose, the lips. His brow. All of these sorts of areas like this. So you just want to go around like that. And then we'll come back. And with that done, what we now want to do is take a small amount of flayed one flesh on its own. And pick out the sharpest extremities. And features. It's just like that. And so with that done, 
what we now want to do is we're going to use a small amount of Screaming Skull to pick out the whites of his eyes. Just like that. And with that done, what we now want to do is use a teeny tiny amount of Black Templar. I'm going to add this in the middle of his eyes as the pupil. Like that. And with that done, what we now want to do is take a tiny amount of Volupus Pink, not very much at all. We just want to use this for his lips. Just like that. And with that, Sigvald, the Prince of Slanesh, is finished. All that's left to do is that wonderful scenic base. So we're gonna get started on that. I'm gonna use a slightly bigger brush than what I've got in my hand. And the first color we're gonna use is Wildwood. I'm gonna use this to color in all of the soil And with that done, what we now want to do is we're going to take some Black Templar. We're going to use this to colour in the decorative paving. So this is areas like this. But what we don't want to do is get this Black Templar on the rock that it's standing on. So you see there's decorative paving here and there's rock underneath. We just want this Black Templar on the paving. And with that Black Templar all applied, what we now want to do is we want to take some Griff Charger Grey and we want to use this to paint in all of our rocks. So we've got the big statue here. And we've got the various paving slabs that that decorative paving is on. As well as that column there. So anything that is stone, we want to get this Griff Charger Grey all over it. And with that done, what we now want to do is take some Skeleton Horde and we're going to use this to colour in all of our bones and skulls. And so with that done, what we're going to do now is we're going to do this stave sticking out of the ground. Now, I could cover it step by step, but once again, uh, they've got a little bit of gold here, which will be the same as all of this gold. We've got a little bit of black here, which will be the same as all of this black. And we've got this area here, the kind of rune at the top, which is going to be the same purple as the rune on the shield. And then we've got the gem in the middle, which is going to be the same as the blue gems there. So, once again, if you just rewind this video and go and have a look. That will tell you everything you need to know about how to do this section. With that little Slaneshi wand finished, what we now want to do, just before we do any highlights, is we want to colour in the rest of that negative space. This is everywhere that doesn't have any plastic detail. So this is this bit here on the base. And the colour that I'm using is Sterling Battlemire, as it closely matches that wildwood. Now there's a little bit of a tonal difference, but don't worry, when we apply our dry brushes, once this is dry, it blends the whole thing together. And with all of that Sterling Battlemire dry, what we can now do is dry brush all of our soil using some Tyrant Skull. So you want to do all of this area that we put down with the Tyrant uh, Sterling Battlemire. 
We also want to do the areas that we did with the wildwood. As you can see, it just blends those two together very nicely. What we can also do is dry brush all of the skulls and bones. We just want to leave that stonework. So I'm going to dry brush that slightly differently. And with that tyrant skull applied, all that's left to do is to dry brush all of that rock. And the color that we're going to be using is some ethereum blue. I just want a very, very gentle dry brush here over the top of all of our stonework. We can do this over the top of the Black Templar as well, but we just want to be extra careful there so as not to put any kind of bright blue smears on it. With those dry brushes complete, as you can see, I've added some tufts to the base just here and there, just to give it a little bit more kind of oomph. And so all that is left to do now is to paint in the rim of the base. And I'm going to be using Corvus Black for this. So I've got some thin down on my palette. I'm just going to start painting this all over. Just like this. And so our base is complete, as is Sigvald, the Prince of Slaanesh, formerly known as Sigvald the Magnificent from his time in the Old World. This is a really, really fun miniature to paint. Funnily enough, the very first things that I painted with contrast paints were Slaanesh demons. Um, it was the Wrath and Rapture set that I painted with a good friend of mine. We tried to do it all in a day and we succeeded. And it just feels like I've sort of come a bit full circle now, which is, well... It's quite an achievement for me and I'm very, very pleased. I'm also extremely pleased with this miniature. I just, I've been going on and on to people about how much I love the way the light plays off of the shield and this armor and the sword, just in that kind of the rotation as you can see it now. And it's just, it's beautiful to behold. I'm really, really very proud of myself as you can tell. If you enjoyed this one and you'd like to support me further like these legends on the screen, you can do so head to patreon.com forward slash warhipster or head to ko-fi.com forward slash warhipster. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, do all of that good stuff. And if you'd like to stay up to date, make sure to click the bell icon. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.